audio on and here we go and so we're going live so welcome to our marksman live stream today we're going to be showing off some of the cool things about our upcoming marksman dlc and we've got the whole crew with us today um we have jay crow hello creative director on armor 3 we have uh, lord petka hello lord of the bounce and <laughs> config lead Cornel, who is our brand and pr pr hello. Marketing manager. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, then we have Corel, who is uh, research and development. Hello. And then behind me we have uh, Thomas Ryan, Zephyr Fire, Hi. Um, who is senior designer. Senior designer on Armor 3. And then we have Martin, who is our junior brand and PR manager. Yep. So, Jay, could you tell us a bit about the Marksman DLC? Uh, absolutely. Well, last time we started a live stream, we had a small problem with the sound balance. So I hope everyone can hear me. Um, but with that in mind, let's kick off. Okay. So Marksman is something like uh, our chance to focus on weapon handling uh, specifically and uh, ranged combat in general. Um, and to do that, we've got this chance to add some interesting new weapons. So the, the five rifles and the two machine guns that we've talked about already. Uh, introduce some sort of long-awaited new features yeah. uh, that communities have uh, been looking forward to for a while uh, and also maybe focus a little bit on this idea of squad based gameplay and we can sort of come back to that I think later on in the stream okay um, so sort of similar to our helicopters DLC that means we add some premium content this means some new weapons some characters some scenarios uh, and we also have a chance to offer a platform update, and this is new gameplay features for everyone that owns Armour 3. Um, I think we, we sort of want to dig into the weapons uh, a little bit later, we'll go yeah. through them in detail. So maybe to begin with, we can talk about what are these gameplay features I'm talking about. Um, and I think the one that is maybe most looked forward to, we are calling weapon stabilization. Okay. So that's a couple of things. That is weapon resting which is where if I'm near some stable surface, I get some, some passive benefit to my aim. I, I'm a little bit less shaky. Uh, and then there's also weapon deployment. And it's a bit more complicated than just bipods, but you can think of it as I can use a bipod, I can pivot around a point of fire and uh, engage the enemy. So basically now is the time for hashtag bipod, hashtag flashing bipod. lights, sirens, <laughs> balloons coming down from the ceiling. I think so. I think so. Cornel's probably already on this. Yeah. Um, but aside from weapon stabilization, that's not the, the only big news. Um, there's also a, a change to the way recoil is handled in game, which is maybe slightly difficult to see in the stream. It's really something you got to get in game and, sh and shoot the weapon. Um, but it, it, the idea behind it is making it a bit more natural to shoot the weapon. Uh, generally, the idea is we want to make firing a weapon simple to do and somehow rewarding to master or, or dig into to, to, to get to get really to grips with how to do things in arm. So we're adding more feedback for the players from firing weapons. Yeah, and maybe more feedback but also more um authenticity. More, more, more logical feedback. More <laughs> authentic it handles as you would expect it to. You're not fighting against the gameplay mechanic. It it should, if we do it right, yeah. <laughs> uh, feel like you would expect it to um, which I think is really cool. Um, aside from that, I'm really uh, interested to, to share with you guys the audio features. Uh, something like an audio overhaul. Um, that's uh, got a few components to it. Uh, mainly, we've changed the sound of many, many of the weapons. So already, if you are if you updated Armor 3 with the last patch, 1.40, you'll hear this sort of work in progress attempt to, to do it to do it splendidly. Yeah. Um, there's also something called frequency attenuation, so that means in the distance, when there's a firefight, it sounds much more characteristic of it being somehow far away from me. It's different to when it's, when it's right up in my face. Uh, and lastly, there's this thing called weapon tails, uh, and this means if I'm shooting a weapon in, let's say, a city environment, um, it, it sort of reverbs off, the, off the, the walls of the urban structures, or if I'm in a forest, it sounds much more enclosed. But if I'm in the middle of the open, or if I'm on top of a hill, it's much more uh, a sense of uh, shooting into a big open environment. Yeah. So if you're in a building with somebody that's firing a heavy machine gun, you're going to be deafened. You're going <laughs> to know about it, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's sort of like a sense of the features. There's a few more little bits that 
maybe we can get into or some people might like to, to ask about, but, but that's the, the top and the bottom of it. So if people would like to ask questions in the chat, we've got a couple of periods where we will answer questions and we will try and do this throughout. Although as it's going a mile a minute right now. <laughs> so well, I think they'll be commenting on our wonderfully coordinated outfits today. Yeah, the joys of uh, text message. Um, so what should we show first then? Well, maybe we can uh, just dig right into the new weapons. Okay. Um, I think we, we should be able to open the, the arsenal from this mode and, and be able to switch between the, the new weapons. Okay, so we'll just switch over now. Um, you should see... Uh, We've got a soldier here with one of the nice new machine guns. Hmm. Yeah, to reiterate, it's uh, five new rifles and two new sort of MMGs, medium machine guns. Um, so what else are we seeing uh, here? Well, aside from the weapons themselves, which you can you can see being held by these characters, uh, we have new um, ghillie suits. I think they're they're on the right. Yeah. yeah. So these are also these are. We have existing ghillie suits in game, but we started again from scratch. We wanted to have uh, a new approach to it. Uh, so we have ghillie suits for each of the factions, uh, NATO, CSAT, um, uh, AF, and not only do we have them for the different factions, but we have them for uh, the different um, sort of places in Altus. So we have um, something like uh, the arid terrain, some more lush terrain, and something like semi-arid. So you can choose your, yeah. uh, your uniform based on um, uh, the environment you think you'll be operating in. So it's a bit more, a bit more fidelity to the choice of these things. And, and again, this is some premium content for the, for the people that uh, own Marksman DLC. Just remember to switch to the game. Yeah, we should, we should be live now. No, I will just change it over manually. Oh, I see, we've been getting some bonus footage yeah, of our wonderful I faces. On the, so you guys that didn't see click this there. This, so, wasn't some, this wasn't some teaser for us not to be able to see it. Yeah. Uh, but maybe the, the easiest way to, to get a real sense of what the weapons look like yeah. is by opening the Arsenal interface. Okay, so... Oh, I don't know if it's the Arsenal. Um, okay, so we'll just go through and... Uh, so you can, Carol... There we go. It's a bar to the radio menu, yeah. We were deciding, should it be action menu, should it be radio? Yeah. Okay. So, what do we see? Armour 3. Okay. We'll try again getting the game up. Okay. So, while Matt is uh, reconfiguring the, the Armour 3, um, we can say, it's Marksman DLC, it's not Sniper DLC. And uh, our sandbox lead, Luca L uh, Lutze, he wanted me to, to talk a little bit about the difference between uh, these two things. Um, so Marksmen are much more squad-based. They, yeah. they, re they require the support of the rest of their team. Um, so the Marksmen and the, the automatic weapon, the, the MMGs, yeah. uh, these are part of a squad. They, they work together and... Um, Whereas we might say a sniper uses much more sniper spotter mechanics, they are uh, much more separate. What we wanted to do was really improve or add some new uh, things for um, squad based gameplay, and these weapons I think fit quite well into that. Okay, so now we are, we are in the arsenal, we can take a look at uh, some of these weapons. Um, I have some notes again from our sandbox team because they are, <laughs> they are they, this took a lot of time selecting the weapons and, and trying to, to make them characteristic. But if we could talk about them in general terms, we would say something like each of them has a certain uh, reason to be. It has a certain yeah. characteristic. So maybe we can we can go through each one, take a look at it, fire it, use the uh, sexy new reload animations, all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, so let's dig in. Maybe we can start with the, the Mar-10. Okay, so this is the Mar-10. So come on, let's hear it. What does it sound like? Cool. So this is uh, a new weapon for the CTRG faction. So it's a NATO weapon, uh, but it's um, maybe a little it's a little special compared to, to a bit more distinctive compared to the rest of the NATO weapons. It uses this huge new uh, uh, round, uh, the, the, the Lapua Magnum. Uh, so it's big, it's strong, it's got a high caliber, uh, and it's you. It's sort of inspired by the uh, the Noreen Bad News uh, rifle. Um, so we take some inspiration from. Uh, from, from various uh, real-life um, 
analogs, and, and this is what the guys have come up with. Uh, we can also see uh, on the top here the, the, one of the new scopes. This is the, the AMS. Uh, and again, uh, there'll be one for NATO and one for CSAT, and uh, the guys spend, spend a lot of time uh, picking out the, the most appropriate scope for, for, for the weapon itself. So we're seeing lots and lots and lots of new weapons and new attachments as well? Yeah, well, so, so the five weapon, the five rifles and the two uh, machine guns, this is in addition, we have the ghillie suits and the, uh, the scopes themselves, two, one for NATO, one for CSAT. So would you like to jump on to the next one then, sir? Sure, absolutely. Um, let's maybe go to the EMR. Okay, again, it's a, it's a NATO weapon. I will just find this. It's uh, just up, up there. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there it is. So, again, this is slightly different from the Martin. It has a bit of a better rate of fire. Uh, this one's inspired by uh, something like a SIG DMR. Yeah. Um, and uh, some of the little details, it has some... some it's not like a brand new off the factory floor uh, weapon. It's got a little bit of scratches. It, it feels uh, the, the guys really spent a lot of time adding, you know, the splendid little details that, that make the weapons connect to the environment a bit more. Uh, overall, it was a really fun process working with uh, our sandbox team and, and the art team. Uh, I think a lot of the guys might have seen the concept art we worked on, uh, and this was this was really fun to iterate and discuss and have arguments about which weapons should be there. How should they feel? What is the point of them? Uh, and in the end, we're, we're really happy with uh, the, 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 the mix. Yeah. So let's move on to uh, another weapon. So this is the second of the five rifles. Maybe we can switch it up a little bit and go to uh, the MK14. This MK14. is the uh, yeah. this is um, like the antique rifle, I suppose we would call it for uh, for 2035. Um, a couple of things. Um, this is a brand new model. Uh, yeah. th we've had this in armor before in some of the previous iterations uh, of our series, uh, but this is built from the ground up. And why did we add it? Well, we have obviously we're set in 2035, and we have a lot of brand new, modern, or even slightly futuristic uh, weaponry. But we wanted to go back and do something that maybe we we're a bit familiar with. So this is a weapon for the FIA Guerrilla faction. So you can imagine this weapon's been around for. You know, quite a few decades by this point, and um, it's it's used by the the low tech local force, if you will. Yeah, and it's uh, I know it it's one of my favorite ones. Um, I'm not exactly sure quite why, but it's just I think it's something about the the way I recognize it, and it's fun to play with. I've got to say, I, I can just hear it through the headphones now that it's sat on the table. And <laughs> single shot was was good, but when I switched on to fully automatic, it just got me grinning like a schoolboy, and I've just <laughs> killed with several of them. Yeah. AI. Yeah, you be careful because I'm not sure <laughs> you've set it up so they won't shoot shoot back at you if you, if you kill too many. Just gotta be an expert marksman. That's true. Um, maybe we can now go on to the CSAT weapons. There's some really cool stuff in here. Uh, so the Kier. Okay. Uh, Do we want the black version or? I think this will be fine. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe the guys watching the stream, if it's clear enough, you can see there are some camo variants. But uh, maybe we'll we'll leave you to explore these when we do the dev branching. More on that later. So the Kier, uh, this is this is the first weapon we started with. We had this idea of uh, we really liked uh, the VKS or VSS weapons uh, that, that, that exist now. We really liked the idea of, of this to have a, a silencer integrated into the weapon itself. Uh, that's that's not all. The, the the sandbox team started out and they said we want it to be somehow special. So they they gave it a huge uh, caliber and then they gave it a huge silencer. So it <laughs> it's, it's not so effective in huge ranges, but if you're relatively close, it, it has definitely this, this interesting gameplay of uh, being suppressed, but being able to, to really have some stopping power. Yeah. So you, if, you, if you're on the receiving end of it, you're going to have a really, really bad day. You, you're definitely going to know about it. And I think we'll get back to that when we come to some of the audio features, like how exactly you will know you're being shot at. Uh, and we'll also touch upon as long as we remember uh, this weapon sound effects overhaul, we, we might be able to already tell here the sound of the uh, the suppressed shot. Yeah. It's um, well, in simple terms, it's a bit more authentic than what we've had previously. It's a little less Hollywood. Uh, it makes some sound, yeah. but it's not quite as much as uh, as something that doesn't have a silencer. So let's uh, let's move on. Um, again, let's, let's stick with the CSAT faction, go to the, the Cyrus, maybe? Cyrus? The Smiley Virus. <laughs> uh, so the, the, the Sandbox guys, they said they wanted to have something with 
a big kick, some big recoil, uh, and also uh, some big stopping power, some uh, some serious caliber behind it, some 9.3 millimeter. Um, uh, if, I, if I look at my notes here, we can say it takes inspiration from the Dragon Arm. Again, this was, <laughs> we had this argument about would we just, do we want to try and add the Dragon Arm itself as this antique weapon, or should we try and try and uh, look at something like a modernized, up to date 2035 variant? So we went with the MK14 and then have this modernized sort of Dragon Arm. Um, and I think it, yeah, it's all out of fun yeah. to You can see the, uh, the, uh, New kickback. Yeah, and also we can see the, uh, or maybe you caught it, the, the new reload animations. Each of these uh, premium content weapons uh, has received a, a lot of polish. So when there's a new caliber, you can see the ejected casing of it. Uh, when you reload it, uh, we have um, special uh, new reload animations for them. This maybe is just s some small yep. side note. Uh, for the longest time, we had uh, this inability to show the ejected casings in first person. So this is when you shoot and you see the brass coming out the side of the weapon. Uh, we actually weren't able to do this before, and but with our focus on the marksman weapons, uh, it's now fixed. And particularly when you're firing the machine guns, which we'll get to later, uh, you get this real sense of, I'm firing a weapon, <laughs> <laughs> rather than just pointing at something on the screen. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Um, let's move on to those machine guns then, maybe. OK. And so the first one, maybe we can, if we stick with uh, CSAT, we can look at the, the Navid. Okay. Yeah. And let's try and get something that's... <laughs> you can use. <laughs> oh, yeah. bypass, oh my god! Uh, so, you, so here we're seeing different, even different colored bipods. Yeah, let's touch on this. There's, so in-game already, there was some default bipod attachments. So they are still there. Yeah. They work now. Um, but in addition to that, um, and this is platform content, this is free for everyone, uh, you have uh, new bipods. So one for each faction. Yeah. So they somehow they look different, and then also they have a little bit of different audio feedback, so it's a lot more characteristic. Uh, and then also they have uh, some color variations, basically, to, to go with the, the camo patterns uh, that, are on, that are on the weapons themselves. So just to touch on, you were saying about the um, platform content. Uh -huh. With the weapons, how, how will that work for people that haven't bought the Marksman DLC? Yeah, well, this relates to um, our general approach yeah. uh, to having premium weapons in the game for everyone. Yeah. And the starting point is to say we don't want to have a situation where the community base is split between those who yeah. own it and those who don't. So if, if the first goal of, this, of our system is to have everyone playing together, then we can say we've achieved that. Yeah. And in the Helicopters DLC, people are do own heli or that don't can play in the same mission with the, with the vehicle there and they can ride in uh, vehicle cargo. Yeah. So with the weapons, you can have them in game, you can be shot at by them, uh, you can see them in uh, your teammate towns, you can see them on the ground. Uh, but right now, uh, our plan is to restrict access to them if you don't own them. Yeah. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the virtual garage and virtual arsenal because this is a, uh, a special part of the game where you can use the guns, you can try them out, whether you own them or not, yeah. and you can see if uh, what you think about them. Uh, and if you like them, then you can buy a DLC, and if you don't, then they'll be in the game for other people, and you still um, benefit from the new features and the other free content that'll be in the game. Yeah, so now for me to engage that rock. That's a very good engagement. Well. I think what we're, what we're seeing here is obviously you're, you're not deployed, you're not using a bipod or anything, and it'll be interesting when we get uh, Lord of the Bounce on the go to, to show us the difference in, in, in stability between shooting like this from the hip, which is very difficult with a huge weapon uh, such as the Mavic, uh, and shooting from a stabilized position. Yep. So let's go to the final NATO weapon, uh, the SPMG. Hello, development version. Yep. So these things are still being worked on in the Marksman DLC. Yeah. Maybe that's a really decent point to touch on it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Let's look at this first, and then I'll talk very quickly about uh, dev branch staging. Yeah. So this is the SPMG. Uh, it's something like the equivalent to the the new CSAT weapon. It's slightly different. Uh, it has a little bit um, lower rate of fire, 
but we can say maybe it's a little more accurate when uh, when it's deployed. It's definitely not meant to be shot from the hip. It's a huge weapon, um, but it's nevertheless a lot of fun if you plan to set up it to set up your firing position correctly. So, and you, you can hear that like the rate of fire is just a little bit less, but it's throwing some some serious metal down range. Yeah, those targets are surely getting it. <laughs> Um, so that pretty much that pretty much covers the, the weapons themselves. I mean, I think we'll we'll continue to see them in action as we go through um, some of the other features. Yeah. So I briefly talked about Dev Branch. So this is the uh, when you play Armor Three, you are normally playing on the, the default branch, what is now 1.40. Yeah. There's also special development branch, and next week uh, our plan is to stage this content onto the development branch. So that means people can jump in, they can play with the weapons, they can see all the bugs that aren't quite yet <laughs> yeah. ironed out, uh, and hopefully offer some feedback um, before we release it to everyone. Yeah. Okay, so I believe that Lord Bounce is going to help you uh, show off some of the stabilization. I, I think so, I think he's been looking forward to it. Hashtag so, bipods. Yeah, let's, thank you very much. Let's that welcome in the Lord of the Bounce. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, he has the ball prepared. Yep. Hello, sir. Hello. Oh, yeah. So, what are we here to do? What are we here to talk about? Uh, I just need to oh, change no. the configuration. What the hell? This guy. Yep. That's me. Bros don't let bros play with inverted axes. Yeah. Okay, you need to remember to put that back because I don't want to look like an idiot trying to, ah. to use it later. Okay, so weapon stabilization. This is a broad term for the uh, for two basic features. Um, so when we were when Matt was shooting the weapons, we saw we were getting quite a lot of kickback. It yeah. was uh, quite a lot of weapon sway. So weapon stabilization is uh, some way to combat this. So we have weapon resting, yeah, and we have weapon deployment. Yeah, maybe you can show us the difference between firing from the hip and then firing from rested. Yeah. Uh, Actually, it's pretty easy because the resting is automatic mm -hmm. uh, and it depends on your ability to use the in environment. So if you go somewhere uh, and it's possible to, to get rested in there, you see that the, your crosshair is uh, much less mm -hmm. and you have next to no sway. Uh, so it's automatic, you don't need to touch like anything. Uh, and when you move to some different place, you can see that the cursor is much, mm -hmm. much bigger mm -hmm. and you can see the sway uh, in the optics when you are shooting, obviously it kicks a lot and now, yeah, it kicks a lot less, yeah. Yeah, and with this feature's been on Dev Branch for a little while, hasn't it? Yeah. And uh, what can we say about, what kind of feedback have we been getting? Well. People have been mostly asking about some feedback uh, that you are actually arrested, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that we are internally discussing mm -hmm. because, uh, for example, I don't think that there's anything necessary because you can see that uh, the weapon's way is completely different. You are something of a minimalist. Really. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, you can see even uh, that the cursor changes if you use the cursor. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, uh, Clear way to communicate it, uh, to communicate the feature to players is something of a necessity for us. So uh, we are looking for a correct way how to say, "Hey, you are now rested." Cool. So that was resting. This is something yeah. that automatically happens to you. So what on earth is this box doing in the middle of Altus? Uh It's just staying in there, it yeah, seems. Yeah, it seems like and so what could we possibly use this for? I don't know, for example, bipods, I would say. Uh, yeah. yeah, wow. Oh. I've deployed the bipod. Yeah, so I have limited angle of fire. I'm s now super stable. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm able to hit like anything down the range. Uh, if I aim correctly and I ch change the zeroing correctly, mm -hmm. uh, I could possibly lean and nice. something new. Uh, there is nice blending of the animations according to, to the position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so where would you say where are we with this feature at the moment? What's the what's the current plan for our development? Well, it's in development. Uh, I would say that uh, it would hit the development branch like late this month. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still well, 
heavily in development, I would say. Yeah. So there's several issues with that, mm -hmm. but as, as you may see, it works pretty correctly with like anything. Yeah. Uh, you could possibly even lay down. So yeah, can where, deploy where can the you, bipod? Yeah, where can you deploy? Uh, well, uh, it detects the surface the same way as the resting does. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's super easy and, and super intuitive because if you see anything that uh, you would put the bipod on, you it would simply it should work. Mm -hmm. And most you, of the time, do I need a bipod to uh, deploy my weapon? Uh, actually, no. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe I we can possibly yeah, show you. There's a bipod. Okay, so here on the interface, yeah. uh, we see um, you can add and detach yeah. this new uh, slot. Yeah. Uh, well, it seems like the slot is kind of broken at, at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, Hashtag in development. Yeah. Uh, it's it's in development. I could possibly show you in Arsenal uh, where I can. Yeah. All right, so it has there's a, a, a new bipod, yeah. and yeah, and now it's empty. Mm -hmm. So let's let's give it a try. Yeah, and now I go to to the box as I did before, and uh, yeah. I'm, I'm deployed. So what is the difference between having uh, a bipod and not having one? Uh, well, obviously uh, the bipod provides you with more stabilization, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's easy to distinguish that you are actually rested or not mm -hmm. uh, be be because obviously the bipod moves uh, and folds uh, or unfolds itself yeah and as, as you may see from the third person you just move to the box and yeah you are now rested cool. or deployed to be precise yeah, so, so definitely these, uh, this is a feature that's been you know, talked about, requested by the community for a long time. And I think the thing I find interesting about it is uh, it gives you, it lets players move around the battlefield maybe more tactically. Yeah. Because you know if I am able to reach a good position to lay down fire, then I can deploy and be a lot more uh, stabilized in my shots. That's so right. I need to plan my movements. You know, if I want to run around and, and shoot from the hip and... and uh, whatever I can do that. I'm gonna be penalized by having this this kickback. I'm gonna have a lot of weapon sway, uh, but I'm gonna be a bit more mobile. Yeah, exactly. If I choose to to take my position here, I can lay down some cover, and then we can start talking about how this fits back into the squad base mechanics. So we can imagine if you're in a fire team moving uh, through a position. Yeah. We, we, if you are the guy designated to have the bipod and deploy. You're going to have a specific plan to go here, provide some cover for your teammates, and uh, while they move through. Yeah. I think one of the interesting things we touched upon, or Yaris actually touched upon in his uh, sit rep, was the underlying technology of, uh, of how deployment and stabilization works. Maybe you, you could offer some insight into this? Yeah, uh, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, like uh, the the gun itself uh, tries to detect if there's a surface underneath or around it uh, that it could deploy on or rest on. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be like anything, uh, any any asset in, yeah. in the world. Uh, it could be the Hesco barrier, the VR barrier. Uh, you could possibly use the rock or even possibly the soldier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm deployed. <laughs> on his head, obviously. And you, Private Nelson could use a goat even. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, uh, it's pretty easy and yeah. if, so, so, if so, the geometries in the model are done correctly, then you could use like everything. Yeah, so I guess this is a, a important because we have official content, which is obviously always configured correctly. Yeah. Uh, but also we have a whole bunch of community content, community terrains, and so this feature should basically just dovetail right into their content and work as yeah. expected. I think that's that's one of the, the, the main uh, advantages uh, of such an approach. And uh, I know, well, a shout out to our program team, uh, particularly Dan and, and Shimon, uh, because they have been really focused on, on this for the, for the last few months, if not a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so we were just touching, uh, before we looked at um, the the, the underlying algorithm itself, we were discussing something like the, the way you would operate in a team. If I'm this guy that has uh, a bipod, I can lay down 
maybe suppressive fire uh, on, upon the enemy. Um, and that gives us the opportunity to talk about a couple of things. First of all, um, players on Dev Branch will already be able to hear supersonic cracks. Yeah. So we had uh, a bunch of feedback about the way supersonic cracks worked in our game. And our audio team have been working to make it splendid. So now, depending on the caliber of your weapon uh, and, oh. and the distance of, the sh of a shot that flies by you, you will hear um, some overhauled sound effects. So if you are being shot at by one of these new weapons, particularly one of the higher caliber weapons, you'll, you should really know about it now. Yeah. But maybe that's not the only aspect that's important. Um, again, if we want to talk about long-term features that, are, that we've been thinking about or that can help infantry gameplay, uh, we have something like suppression. Yeah, and we I think there's looking some, forward to and that. I think there's been some progress here. Yeah, uh, like the supersonic cracks is just a part of suppression. Uh, like if you hear the shots going right uh, around you, then you are possibly going to get into the cover a lot much faster. I would say. <laughs> I would say so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, the same goes for the AI. Uh, like there's been several steps. The first steps, uh, step has been that uh, the AI uh, doesn't go into the line of fire because if if there's an, anything that uh, you are firing on, the AI tries to move out of the uh, area uh, and go into the cover. So AI can now detect these basically fire zones. Yeah. So if we're, if we're moving through a city. And if I'm laying down suppressive fire on, let's say, a certain crossroads, the AI will not, not like try to avoid this area if possible. Yeah. Like, if they have to move through there, they will. But ideally, they will not walk through the line of fire, basically. Yeah. So this was the first step. Um, maybe the second, uh, again, sort of relates to this idea of supersonic cracks is now if you, sh if you uh, fire a weapon and the, the round goes past the AI's head or um, in a certain area or it impacts the ground around them, the AI now know about this. Yeah. Uh, they not only know about it, but they are going to react to that mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if they see the enemy, they are going to get to the cover and engage the enemy. If not, they are going to get to the cover and try to get some more information like for from the like, uh, HQ. Mm -hmm. So uh, they share the information. So if you should shoot near the AI, uh, the information is going to be spread mm -hmm. across the whole faction, I would say, uh, and across first uh, across the group, the, the team that in the AI is, and then uh, across the whole site as so, it goes up. So basically, now AI behavior is being slightly enhanced, and if I shoot around them, they react in uh, a more intelligent way. We could yeah, say. definitely. So the final, and, and it, maybe it's worth saying, these uh, advancements are on dev branch right now. Yeah. So the final step in at least how we're dealing with suppression at the moment is to link the shots landing around or flying around an AI to um, their ability to return fire. Um, so there's something called, a, in technical terms, the dynamic aiming error. Yeah. And this means that when an AI has uh, this value being quite high, the, their ability, their capacity to, to return fire and to return it accurately is degraded. So Definitely. they are they are less deadly. Um, so now, if we have shots firing around them, this will make them uh, slightly less, um, well, depending on the caliber that you're shooting at them with, maybe yeah. a lot less able to, to return fire on your position. I think that's kind of interesting for because of the gameplay possibilities it opens up. It means now maybe we can we can move tactically through uh, any given situation. Yeah. We can have one guy laying down some suppressive fire while the rest of his team uh, moves maybe through the open between cover. And that's, I think, a really fundamental change to, to the way you can approach a problem in armor. Yeah. Um, and it's definitely something we've been, we've been working on for a while. And, we hope to see the results of, of this final step on Dev Branch uh, in the near future. Maybe next week, maybe in a fortnight. Yeah. And you are actually able to suppress some area so AI won't go there and your team may technically move to some different uh,
position. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it helps the tactical play the same way as uh, the resting helps the tactical play because you need to find some a good place where to rest the weapon yeah. or deployment. Uh, if you deploy, then you are quite vulnerable mm -hmm. if you get uh, caught from behind. Yeah, so uh, it needs to be done in cooperation with the team. Yeah, and yeah, so that I think it, that's a very good point because it fits back into what we talked about right at the start. Like, what is the point of marching DLC? What does it do? And this this focus upon improving team-based gameplay, uh, I think, uh, fits very well with this idea of suppression. And this idea of suppression fits very well with. Um, weapon deployment and um, deployment is uh, an important part of these new weapons. Yeah. So everything sort of is, is coming together, hopefully, to make basic infantry combat uh, even more yeah, splendid. So. Even more splendid, yeah. So we touched upon uh, the supersonic cracks. Uh, this was something like an, an area of uh, audio development. Um, there are a few more things that we can talk about, uh, but maybe to do that, we would enlist the help of. Thomas Zip Five Live Revive. Yeah. And he can come and show That makes it. sense. Yeah. So, so thank you very much for your you. splendid demonstration, yeah. sir. And Always I pleasure. hope Zipper doesn't forget to change the inverted mouse. <laughs> if it wasn't clear Hello no, Becker is sitting upon an enormous ball. Yes, so I'm now taking back the proper chair. <laughs> All right. Hello Thomas. Hello. I'm going to put these on. So while the purpose while Thomas, of this is, Thomas is, uh, is setting up, uh, yes. we have a little scenario. Prepared. All right, it's inverted. Uh, let me introduce him a little more. For those that don't know, Thomas is a senior designer for the content team. That means he works on uh, primarily missions, uh, but also he's been focusing upon some new systems. And I think we'll, we'll get to see those a little bit later. Yes. But first, uh, let's have a look at um, the audio features. So what Thomas is going to do, is what is Thomas going to do? Well, basically what we have here is we have a very quickly set up mission, simple mm -hmm. mission, simple firefight in this little town, yep. uh, which I'm going to finish now as we're as I'm uh, talking. Cool. But the idea is that hopefully by having this, we'll be able to very organically see a lot of the new uh, sound improvements. Yeah. That come so, so let's talk about those. Um, I mentioned before in 1.40 we already sort of leaked out a few of the new weapon samples themselves. So this is when I sh when I fired a weapon, we have a new set of sound effects. Uh, this links in with some of the other work we're doing. Um, first of all, we can talk about distance-based frequency attenuation. That's uh, sort of a big word, or to, to describe something actually quite simple. A firefight that's happening in the distance will sound uh, different to a firefight that's happening right beside me. Um, as, as the feature suggests, the frequency of the shots are attenuated, uh, but there's probably less point talking about that in technical terms, and it's more interesting to hear it in action. So what Thomas is doing is setting up a firefight in a village, and it's positioning us a little bit further away from, from, this, from this combat. Yeah. And what I've also done is disable the uh, AI's ability to damage each other, so we'll hear a lot of gunfire. But if I was to shoot dirty hacker, them, yeah, if I was to shoot them, then uh, we'd uh, we'd have damage properly simulated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I don't have my earphones on. Yeah. Can you tell me? Can we hear the firefight? Not just yet, but you can see that the guys are moving into position over oh, there. Anticipation yeah. is palpable, Thomas. Now you can hear some gunshots already, mm -hmm. just a couple. You can, I'm hearing them as well. Yeah, grenade, okay. Uh, yeah, so you can hear very much uh, that these sounds are sounding quite significantly different. They mm -hmm. sound like they are actually in the, uh, in the distance. I... <laughs> yeah, maybe it would help um, the, our viewers to hear mm -hmm. if we bumped up the audio a bit. Uh, I was informed that the audio balance, at least according to our brand and PR manager, Cornel, is perfect. But uh, if other people have issues with I'm the gonna, volume as it is now... I'm going to create a directive you are? and turn up the volume okay. by 50%. Okay, hold on. We'll fix that right now. Okay, so where are we to begin with? We're right so here. we'll go yeah. back there. All right, let's bring us up to here. here. All right, all right. So what we're hearing now Apologies is, if I suddenly get very loud. <laughs> what we're hearing now is uh, attenuated... Yeah, frequency attenuated attenuation applied to the shots between the AI. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more. If, if you hear these sounds, you know that there's a firefight somewhere off in the distance, yeah. as compared to when you ride out it. Yeah. So let's move a little closer towards mm -hmm. it, and then 
hopefully, <laughs> we'll be able to hear the difference. Yeah, as we move closer into the town, the shots will become a lot clearer to hear, mm -hmm. and it'll sound like they're happening much closer to us than uh, they were a second ago. You can already hear the difference. I'm probably already getting a little bit loud in my speech. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you guys, to my left right here. All right, let's bump the, uh, the sound down just a little bit. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> because I think as we get into the firefight proper, it might get a little, a little bit hairy. Yeah, All right, that, that looks good too. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, another part of the audio feature. So I mentioned something called weapon tails before. Uh, it's it's oh, a little oh. bit of an awkward word, but essentially what it is, is we have the shot itself, mm -hmm. and then a layer at the end of the shot, yeah. which which is determined by the environment. Mm. Yeah. So, so while I'm in this denser urban environment, it's a little bit hard to hear. What we might do, <laughs> what we if might we do is quickly teleport. move us somewhere a little quieter. So we've now teleported new spot. All right. So now we're, as you can see, pretty in. Well, we're in a pretty dense environment. Uh, if I was to shoot now, there's a very specific sound mm -hmm. that uh, you're hearing alongside the default shooting sound. So maybe let's go from here yep. to the coast. Sure. And uh, see how Just how it, different it, it sounds. Sure. sure. Okay. So now we're right next to the Altus coast. If I give off a couple shots, you hear that the tails are much longer. Mm -hmm. Like the actual, as the bullet's flying through the air, it's last, the tail off at the end lasts much longer. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a subtle effect, but in short, what we're doing is connecting the, the feedback of the shot mm -hmm. to the location that you're in. Yeah. Um, Even if I go into like the forest here, yeah. for example, it'll sound just slightly different. It's a very subtle change, but it does a lot to connect you to uh, the environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. Yeah, so there are a number of uh, sort of location types, mm -hmm. and these again are determined automatically. Mm -hmm. So any map that we have in Armor Three, uh, community or otherwise, uh, should have um, this sound map, which is automatically generated when the map is built. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I'm standing in a forest, um, the simulation tells the audio engine I have 100% forest. Yeah, exactly. So the layer that plays, this tail that plays at the end of the shot, is mostly. Mm -hmm forest shooting. But even like when I start moving out of the forest, um, if I went from like forest to denser area, if I went forest to open area like I'm doing now, it's not like an instant sudden yeah. change, it's a prog uh, progressive change. Yeah, these layers are actually all played at once, but they have different intensities. So right now we have something like, well, let's call it yeah. meadows. You effect. can hear that this lasts a lot longer. Like, yeah, you can even hear a bit of the echo in the distance of the gunshot itself. So now it's playing something like 50% this, 50% that. So there's a really fluent transition between these different mm -hmm. areas. So it's not some sort of shocking, I was in the city, mm -hmm. now I'm in a forest. Exactly. It's much more uh, organic, at mm -hmm. least, at least of the hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah, so, as, so we had the uh, supersonic cracks themselves mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. relates maybe to suppression. We have uh, the, the audio overhaul of all of the samples of the weapons, yep. a bit more high quality. Uh, we have the weapon tails, the frequency attenuation. Yep. And this is our main focus for, for Marksman, but if, if we're able to, we, we might be able to sneak in a feature or two extra uh, <laughs> before the project lead tells us to stop. Yeah, uh, cuts us off. Was it, well, uh, fingers, like a bartender. Fingers crossed for that. If, uh, if we do have any additional enhancements, I'll be sure to, to, to share them on the forums and, and on Dev Branch mm -hmm. first. Um, but that's pretty much all I wanted to say about the, the sound effects. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Obviously, the, the bipods themselves, they, they have uh, audio feedback too. Um, a lot of little details like this mm -hmm. have been supporting the sandbox very nicely. Um, but aside from that, well, we'll continue tweaking and polishing on oh, up to launch. But I think now it's time for me to, to go chop down a tree. I think so. Uh, and welcome Mr. Carl Mariki into the scene. Yes. So if you don't excuse me, I'll just make it awkward. You're making it so awkward. I arrive at a grace without you awkwardness. Do. Yeah. Hello. So now I think we've got enough of weapons. Now let's take a look at some vehicles. I think I so. must point out there are no new vehicles in the Marksman DLC, mm. like uh, there were in Helicopters DLC. But however, we uh, improved the way how to preview vehicles. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of you know, may know already the Virtual Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Let's go in there. 
Uh, we already use it at the beginning of the stream, mm -hmm. and it's great tool to preview all weapons, equipments, uniforms, face, voice, whatever you, you have. But we never had a habit for vehicles. So we actually added, uh, we call it garage, mm -hmm. but it's part of Arsenal. It can be accessed through, this, uh, through the uh, virtual Arsenal in main menu. Yeah. And let's take a look at it. Very quick. And uh, surprise, surprise, it's pretty much Arsenal for vehicles. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the main things uh, which sets this apart from previewing uh, uh, vehicles from the, in the editor is that uh, DLC logs are lifted here. Mm -hmm. So, for example, t let's uh, go see one of the helicopter one DLC helicopter, sure. helicopters. Normally, you wouldn't be, if you don't own the DLC, you wouldn't be able to get in mm -hmm. to fly it, and you would see some uh, notification about uh, our uh, encouragement to buy DLC. Not in a virtual garage. Everything will be unlocked. And you will be able to uh, fly it freely before you buy the DLC, mm -hmm. and you may be able to experience how awesome it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to, to menu we can return back, but uh, one of the new unique things is also uh, let's try Hummingbird. Mm -hmm. Already uh, since the release, some of the vehicles had some tweakable, let's say, parameters uh, like skins or uh, parts which will be displayed. Mm -hmm. However, our framework uh, wasn't easy to or wasn't very friendly for mission designers or render makers to configure it. Not anymore. Now, using Virtual Garage, you will be able to uh, configure uh, selected vehicles to add some parts. So, for example, uh, you can remove benches or back seats and uh, add a little frame there. Yeah. So, so you can customize it. Or, what's more interesting, you can customize the whole skins, mm -hmm. uh, how, how it will appear. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look at it. Uh, Only one here. Oh yeah, yeah. try the civilian one. Yeah, it's sure. got so much cooler skins. Right, same. right above it, right above there it. Is. Yes. yes. Here we go. So now we have plenty of skins, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, let me remind again, it's not for all vehicles currently. It's just selected vehicles, but uh, any new vehicles we will uh, vehicle we will add in the future, we will want it to be tweakable. And of course, as with everything we make, it's completely community friendly solution. So once this feature, once Marchman DLC is mm -hmm. released, we will add documentation to our official channels how to configure a vehicle with this customization in mind. Furious. Uh, yeah, my favorite is Ion, obviously. Ion. But that may be because I made actually uh, uh, my DLC might now. Be a little too. bit biased. And of course, on right, you could say perhaps notice that there's you can configure crew. Mm -hmm. uh, hold this as we configuring. Uh, as with Arsenal, mission makers can export the the scripted format of the helicopter or of the, any vehicle, and then put it to mission. Mm -hmm. So they can set up specific vehicle here, put it in the mission, and run run some code in it, right. and it will look exactly how they mm -hmm. set it up here. It's already for Arsenal, so we're now we're introducing it for vehicles. Yeah, and as well, we can now. I see all crew positions, mm -hmm. which is probably not interesting for a hand, but if you return back to the uh, hummingbird, hummingbird, the military yeah. ones, we can specifically see yeah. which position is on each bench. Oops. That was my mistake. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Show the menu again. again. Uh, yeah, but we recently, mm -hmm. recently added firing from vehicles. Uh, but sometimes mission makers have trouble, like, uh, okay, I put soldier in a, in a helicopter, will he sit in the left bench mm -hmm. on the back? Yeah. No problem now. now. Done here. You just configure it here and export the code. Obviously, right now we are in the game, so we cannot ex show the exported code, and probably it would be interesting <laughs> anyway, it's just a bunch of code. Yeah. Uh, so now I don't know oh, what you don't see in top right because there are our beautiful faces in bottom right part of the screen. There are two buttons, try and close. So close is just it, it just uh, closes the arsenal mm -hmm. and uh, uh, right on the back. Mm -hmm. But try will let you play it immediately. Not as interesting for helicopter as uh, why let's I go back. Yeah, l let's try a tank for example. Sure. Let's go slammer. Slammer yes. up. Yes. Let's try it. All right. Let's go in it. Uh, for some reason, we were teleported slightly. Oh yeah, there they are. Okay. So drive. Uh, that's probably some bug I have to fix. <laughs> Development version. <laughs> Everything's possible. Open. What what we added like before in Arsenal, you are able to shoot at some dummy targets around mm -hmm. and see how they are react to your caliber or how they don't react depending on the weapon you have. Well, with vehicles, we need the same. So we added virtual armored targets. 
So let's switch to Gianni position and blaze, blaze them out. Right. Obviously, they they react on uh, what which damage you mm -hmm. you hit. So those damage are fairly representative of the three basic types of the vehicle. So we have we have main battle tank here. You can see we hit it, we damage it, but when one one shot, no way we can destroy it. Then we have APC there, which cannot stand uh, armored piercing mm -hmm. bullets. And then of course we have uh, Strider. Which, as you can see, is slightly misconfigured. Our config department is on it. <laughs> it should be totally just right now. It should be absolutely red. There we go. But th that's no issue for so far. So you can test how uh, the weapon you have react, or how vehicles, uh, vehicle classes react mm -hmm. to weapons. So if you switch the machine gun, oh yeah, and, and reference that to start. If you switch the machine gun and try to shoot at the tank, it's like, ha, <laughs> I <laughs> like it. It's but a scratch. Yeah. Uh, but if you actually hit the tires of uh, of the APC, mm -hmm. they can be destroyed fairly easily. Yeah. And then if you would then, um, uh, the destroy the Strider, it would be destroyed pretty much immediately. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that would be one achievement probably tied to destroying these targets. So right. Achievement hunters can look forward to it. And what, what's more also, if you actually circle around the tank to the back, mm. so let's take the driving seat again. It's not only the sur it's not only the surface; it's what's inside that counts. Mm -hmm. So we actually uh, on these uh, models we uh, appro put approximation of where engine is or fuel tanks and APCs. So you can see uh, if you go to back to the gunner and hit the tank from the behind or zoom in. It's probably not that well visible here. You see a little bit of a difference, yeah. but if I shoot. You can yeah, see in orange. Yeah, you could see we destroyed the hull, but we also se severely damaged the uh, the uh, engine inside. Mm -hmm. And also, you could see before we were shooting from the side, we each p badly damaged the tank from uh, from back, where armor is the the, the weakest. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we can uh, we can score the ultimate hit. Yeah. So this also is a way how to teach players to. Where basically sh shooting at targets, so what's mm. the best angle? And proper tactics proper for using a main battle tank. Precisely, like or up against enemy armor of any kind. Precisely, because when you're playing mission, it might not be exactly clear how much damage mm. you're dealing. So that's we have this virtual safe environment where you can do whatever without actually being afraid. And that same applies on infantry. So if you switch to a, a machine gun, the we, we can see we change the targets a bit, so they apply. Uh, they have the mm -hmm. same logic behind them. Uh, switch to uh, 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 high explosive shells. High explosive rounds. Yeah, we have groups here, so uh, it seems like you we do not have you don't, you don't high explosive rounds. Well, rounds. so okay, we'll just use that. Hold on. Well, they both goes by jam hey. because it's uh, <laughs> yeah. This is actually armor piercing shell, so it doesn't have a large blast radius. Yeah. So it's totally destroyed the soldier, but in explode and impact. Mm -hmm. So that's why all soldiers around survive. Let's, uh, for example, let's switch weapon and uh, go for some uh, MRAP with, uh, sure. with grenade launcher, for example. Yeah. MRAP, uh, it will be in cars. Yeah. You could see, uh, again, sorted into categories, so you can quickly find a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, let me remind, this all works with community content. So if you find, if you install some uh, some mod, which adds new vehicles, you don't need, you no longer need to. It works to, out of the box. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you don't rely on some uh, com uh, some prepared demo mission or you don't do need to check where in editor they are. Mm -hmm. Just go to Arsenal and see all possible options. So do I let loose? Yeah, just look what you have machine gun for. Well, that was rather thick. <laughs> but yeah, you can see. Oh, completely you, damaged. Actually, you can see they're not completely damaged, mm -hmm. and that's another bug. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. There's a but there we go. Yeah, you don't. Guys, don't need to put it to feedback track. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Again, development version. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So, anything right. else of note? Well, there are some vehicle. There are actually some stuff of some vehicles added by marksmen, but we could have, we wouldn't call them vehicles, mm. and we don't show them here. So okay. Some okay. of you may notice them or the interesting who don't to go mm. there and reply to see again. Right. Okay. So, do we move on now to showing off some of the playable content that will be included with marksmen? We can absolutely. Okay. All right. So You're the playable go, content guy. Let's go with that. Exit from here. So. Marksman will be adding um, some playable content into the package. Uh, some will actually be accessible to everyone. 
some will be premium content following our platform. Look at that beautiful premium. Marksman icon already in the list. <laughs> right there. Yep. That's beautiful. So there will be uh, some new training missions designed to help you guys uh, learn how to use all the new features. Um, if we go out of the learn menu into showcases, there will actually be two new showcases. Yeah, you, uh, you, you could see we recently implemented all of our DLC specific mm -hmm. content is now uh, marked by some icon. Mm -hmm. It's goes to an editor, mm -hmm. it's here in the showcases list, you could have seen it in Arsenal. Yep. So again, it will be much easier to identify what belongs to what. Mm -hmm. So we have a firing for vehicles showcase, we also have a marksman specific showcase. One thing to note that's interesting about the firing for vehicles showcase is that it will also have a multiplayer version. Uh, which you can access through the multiplayer menu if we head there now. We don't need to go. Uh, but one, uh, oh, hold on just a sec, it seems. Yeah, okay, we're fine. But one thing that some of you might already be aware of is we are trying a uh, public alpha for our new Marksman multiplayer mode uh, called Endgame. Now, this already is out for everybody in the dev branch, uh, but what we'll show you here is some of the new features that are being prototyped for the Marksman DLC for future uh, future use. You mean there are more features in Marksman DLC? Oh, yes. Bipods and weapon oh, and yes. There's still some things we have not yet shown you. So let's hop in right here. And like uh, th those, uh, those features will be part of the DLC or will they be accessible for anybody part of the engine package? They will be part of the actual platform package. So uh, you don't need, so, so it will be accessible to everybody. So yeah, so mm -hmm. they'll be completely for free. So right now, how do you even earn money? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question, one that I cannot answer. So what we have here is Endgame, which is already accessible to everybody what on Dev Branch. This we are about to get to. I will show you once we get in game. Yeah, no. Just going to quickly run through a couple of, time. yeah, it's it's all, since we're going with this early access public alpha uh, plan, some of the things are very much subject to change as time goes on, including things like the overview image. So, here we are inside Endgame, we'll just wait for the timer to count down. But one of the first... What is the timer for? And per, uh, just allowing everybody to load in and get you and get ready. So you cannot move mode. now, so, mm, so yeah. it's not okay. like somebody would run over. So, first new feature, which we are prototyping at the moment, is group management. So here you see you have, obviously there's only just us in the server at the moment, but... Our profile uh, is Ultimate, ultimate marksman. marksman. Ultimate Marksman, this is us right here. Uh, but what this allows you to do is create and manage groups with your friends. So I'm not relying on what mission design yep. prepared. If a, like let's say a bunch of friends jump in, mm -hmm. so they can create a group for their own, mm -hmm. give it some name or logo, yeah. and behave like consistent. Uh, as we just uh, as we just did by hitting the create. I don't button like right the there. icon. Give it a different. <laughs> yeah, so we can also even oh, change. It's uh, like but it. it's intended that we can change that later okay. on uh, per group. But. The as has been mentioned earlier in the stream, one of the focuses is encouraging this uh, group or squad team play uh, more with the marksman DLC. In because future because the team, you can hear the radio protocol mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. You can see to, like targets are per market yeah. much faster. You see where your squad mates mm -hmm. are. So group has some advantages over just your yeah. other players on the same side. And so that's what this group management ability is aiming to achieve, is to basically encourage people to play as these smaller units working towards uh, smaller objectives. In the case of Endgame, working towards the bigger goal of winning the round for their whole side. And as you mentioned, this, this is not just mission mm -hmm. specific. This mission is the first to showcase mm -hmm. it. But this whole system will be absolutely generic, and any mission maker will be able to. Oh, I want to use this group, yeah. group management in my mission. He will implement it. Mm -hmm. Not sure if it will be module or function. Uh, Nelson will know more because yeah. he's the uh, guy behind it. We will see. You can even change Nelson your one one. Uh, your group name, Nelson One One. He's one well, of our. This is Nelson One One requesting immediate support. <laughs> one of our fellow colleagues, not here today, but he is responsible primarily for the development of this system. Regular viewers might know him or recognize mm -hmm. him from the private streams. Nelson. <laughs> our campaign players might know yeah. some Nelson specific <laughs> mentions. Trivia. Probably yeah. not suitable for this. Trivia. But you can see here basic information. Uh, it's a little harder to go into the expanded functionality, which is us, but. But you can see at the bottom right. we have the join button, the invite button. You can send invites to other people. All right right now, everybody just image.
Legion. The server is full of people, mm -hmm. and there are like 50 players, which obviously is not that they are alone. And you want to get into alone. a group specifically. <laughs> you want to get into a group specifically occupied by your friends. And so what they can do is they can have created a group. They can go into this players menu here, find you, click uh, select you, click this invite button. You will get a notification. You just tap you, go in. There will be even a little notification uh, log down here, which you can double click, or you can go into the groups thing here and select and join the group. And, the, and this all is already in the development branch. This is all there for you guys to play specifically in Endgame for now, but the idea is later on in development, we will be it will be accessible mm -hmm. everywhere. So, so uh, once we finish streaming, go play in the game yeah. and see that. But you can't mention multiple features. There is, as you pointed out just before we started, there is one more thing of interest to point out, and that's what, uh, what we are calling uh, shared objectives. But so generally we it's already have a task system mm, of visualization. Exactly. So we have always had tasks in the game Since that, I'm at two, yeah, that have always told you what you're supposed to do, guided you through the mission. Um, but we've acknowledged feedback from both internal and external sources that it, it needs some improvement. And so what we've gone about is figuring out how we can improve that. And that is what we have here in Make it for now. Yeah. So what you have is every task that is, uh, that is um, so accessible to you in the mission uh, will appear like an icon like this. So that you can see only one task, yeah, but again, now. use your imagination. Yeah, imagine a whole bunch of different ones. All over mm -hmm. the map. So what we have here, establish FOB, you can see we have uh, one person, that's me, assigned to it. Um, and you will notice that there is some additional functionality to this button here. So if I click it, it actually unassigns me from the task. So it changes color to indicate this, and it also will uh, propagate that to all of my subordinates in my group. So now so the, the task, systems are a task little is bit no longer important. orange, it's yep. just black, so it's unassigned, mm -hmm. and when you click on and it... And if I wanted to click on it here, you can also see that it now selects, and it also opens up yeah. the window here. So the diary remains the same, mm -hmm. it's mainly a fast map interaction. This is mainly based on the feedback from the support game mode, yes. what's called support, right? Support, There, yes. there are multiple people... From the marksman There were some strauss... Uh, helicopter yeah, there were, Oh yeah, helicopter yeah. Yeah. There were tasks which were for multiple people, mm -hmm. but usually when one, per one person completes the task, it was no longer available for mm -hmm. others. So when you are picking which task to Just like well, that. select, mm -hmm. you you now immediately see, oh, other players already mm -hmm. completing this, mm -hmm. so I may focus my uh, my attention elsewhere. Yeah. And other tasks uh, that are being you that are assigned to other groups than yours will also be visualized differently, so you know which ones are being tackled. Um, but you can also see the additional information hovering over that how many people are there, so you can just, you can decide for yourself is that enough for them to complete the objective. If not, you can also yeah. join the fight and go and help them. And the idea here is that it's just very simple task assignment, unassignment, super fast. You hi you highlight it, you go over, you click, and it's done. Important click, click, to say click. this is. Uh, not default behavior all yes. across the mission. So mm -hmm. if you're a mission maker, you released mission, let's say, several months ago, this won't get in because it could potentially break some things. Yes. So right now it's uh, uh, opt-in. You mm -hmm. need to enable the functionality as yeah. a mission maker. Uh, our future plan is that perhaps it expands your perhaps sooner, but generally, eventually, we would want to enable these icons everywhere. Mm -hmm. So there would be some, let's say, default icon, yeah. and all missions could benefit from it. But first, we want to test it, mm -hmm. test how it works, exactly. if it's really mission maker friendly, mm -hmm. and that's what this marksman uh, proof of concept Precisely. is. Precisely, yeah. And you all can try it right now, specifically in the end game mode available on Dev Branch uh, for early testing. Um, Seems like this endgame is uh, packed a bit full of features. What is the endgame? Oh yeah, and I can see it. Is it? There's the actual, we have also made does, but, subtle improvements but to... But this icon doesn't belong to the task system. This is, no. This is actually yeah. a mission But specific. the idea will also be to uh, improve how tasks are visualized yeah. in the 3D world, but that will save for a later yeah. time. And what is the endgame about, actually? Well, it's, um, it's a specific multiplayer mode for marksmen, and the idea is to have two sides pitted against each other, trying to get reach, basically, an endgame first. What uh, is endgame? It is... Uh, when you say endgame, I imagine nuclear explosion, which is probably not going <laughs> to be what to have there yet. Well, right now, not to, not to hugely spoil it for anybody, but it is uh, intelligence-based. You have to find the package, you have to deliver it to a point before the other team can. That's it in a, in a very, very small nutshell. Um, so but, whichever teams get the intelligence, mm -hmm. the other one must prevent it. Yes. So it's like sort of race against time exactly. and preventing yeah. it. That's it encourages some really great PvP gameplay in a small environment, allowing like really high player density, lots of lots of back and forth. It's 
a lot of fun. But you can go try it for yourselves yes. right now on Not right now, after the stream. Or after our stream, which I believe we are yes, looking to yeah, yeah, wrap yeah. up right now. Cool. So I think everybody else will be coming back in and I'm going to swap with uh, with Matt again. Hold on. And then I think everybody's gonna stay around. Yep. Ah. Oh, right into formation. <laughs> So, I'll just take us back to full screen. So, thank you everybody for kind of tuning in today. Uh, we, we saw about 2,800 people at our peak, I think. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed a lot of the stuff you've seen with the bipods and the suppression, as well as uh, the vehicle garage, the, the virtual garage. Garage, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so hopefully you've liked some of it, and uh, it's been a lot of fun for all of us. So uh, we can't wait till you get your hands on it and uh, start enjoying it. Anything uh, from anyone else? Go play Endgame. <laughs> like, like me now. Yeah. So I don't think uh, about Endgame. Uh, probably in the near future we will do a dedicated live stream part where we can more better explain what it is about and uh, show why it's cool. Private Nelson is looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then maybe in addition to that, uh, the exact release date of the Marksman DLC uh, we will announce at a later date, but you should count for April. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching and have a good night with your bipods. See ya. <laughs> Bye.